final speaker for today, uh, last but by no means least, uh, Igor Shatinin from uh, the National University of Science and Technology in Moscow, who's going to be talk talking about steels modified by fullerenes and carbon nanotubes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to present uh, the report devoted to a study of structure and properties of chromium molybdenum steel modified by fullerene and carbon nanotube addition. Uh, the work uh, was carried out in National University of Science and Technology and uh, Bochfor High Technology Research Institute of Organic Materials. Uh, in recent years, nanostructured carbon forms such as fullerene and carbon nanotubes uh, very often use it for modifying and preparation of carbon composite based on different metals, alloys, polymers, and ceramics. Uh, production process uh, used for these materials exhibit a great variety. Uh, more frequently for modification using high energy milling and uh, hot pressing. Uh, however, information about studies related the modifying of high alloy steels, in particular industrial steels, chromium molybdenum steel, uh, isn't available in the literature. Thus, the complex studies of structure and properties formation, the steels uh, which were prepared by high energy milling uh, with fullerene and carbon nanotube addition. Uh, Subsequent hot pressing and hot treatment is topical both research and practical points of view. And uh, this is the, uh, the goal of this work. Uh, to achieve the goal of the following uh, task were formulated. First, to instigate uh, futures of structure formation of powders produced by high energy milling process, chromium molybdenum steel with addition of fullerene and carbon nanotubes. Uh, second, to study the structure transformation during hot pressing and rolling of steel samples. Next, uh, to investigate the effect of heat treatment of, of, on the morphology of the resulting compacts, to evaluate the mechanical properties, and uh, to identify the effect of carbon modifiers on the structure and properties of the materials. Uh, in, this in this work, we used the next materials. It's an uh, industrial chromium molybdenum, chromium molybdenum steel with about 12% of chromium and about 2% of molybdenum. We used uh, multi wall carbon nanotubes, the same image you can see on the slide, and uh, fullerene. In this work, we used uh, fullerene in the form of fullerite concentrate powder containing 85% of C. 60, 10% of C70, and 5% of higher fullerenes. And the fullerene uh, we added as a solution in toluene. The amount of additive was uh, about 1 and 5%. On the next slide, you can see the experimental scheme. Uh, on the first step, including centrifugal spraying and pre mill. Uh, was necessary to obtain the powder from a bulk initial state chromium molybdenum steel. Uh, centrifugal spraying was carried out in a helium atmosphere and the uh, cooling rate of this process was about one uh, million kelon per second. And the uh, pre uh, uh, carried out was carried out in a argonium atmosphere during one hour. The amount uh, on the next slide, uh, on the next step uh, in the obtained powders in the first part uh, were added fullerene, on the second part multi wall carbon nanotubes, and uh, third part without addition. The quantity, the amount of the additives was 1 and 5 percent. Uh, in the next step, the obtained mixture was milled in a high energy milling uh, in a bowl mill in an argonium atmosphere. Maximum milling time was five hours. Uh, next, the milled powders was uh, subjected hot pressing at 
1050 degree uh, hot rolling and 900 degree and the final hot treatment. Now I'd like to discuss results. Uh, for after centrifugal spraying, uh, the steel has a flake shape with length about one to three centimeters, width about half centimeters, and thickness about 10 micrometers. Uh, according to XRD data, uh, the steel consisted of alpha phase and a small quantity of gamma phase. Uh, the lattice spacing of alpha phase uh, increases due to formation of solid solution. Uh, you can see the ten image uh, of the steel on the slide. The, there are grains uh, with size about two to six micrometers. Mosbauer data confirms the presence of austenite. Uh, you can see austenite sang sanglate and sextate of alpha phase with distribution of hyperfine magnetic field because of form formation of solid solutions. On the next slide, uh, the result of XRD after premill. According to XRD data, uh, austenite singla singlate is absent and uh, Lattice spacing of alpha phase uh, is the same of before pre uh, According to Nussbauer data, austenite is absent too, uh, and uh, distribution of hyperfine magnetic field for alpha phase six state is same uh, as initial state. Um, XRD data of chromium molybdenum still after milling with five person of fullerene carbon nanotube additions shows that uh, halo around the line of 110 of alpha phase uh, formed uh, after two hour in the case of fullerene additions and after half hour in the case of uh, carbon nanotubes added. Longer milling uh, resulted in the formation of carbides different types of carbides. The particle size of alpha phase and carbides was about 10 nanometers. It's uh, the analysis of uh, bordering, uh, line bordering. Uh, transmission electron microscopy data uh, images you can see on the slide. Uh, uh, powder particles with size about one micrometer and uh, these particles contain the mixture of equi-exit particles of alpha phase e carbides with size 10 and 15 nanometers. Nussbauer spectroscopy shows that there are alpha phase with distribution of hyperfine magnetic field, six state with uh, smaller hyperfine magnetic fields, and doublet associated with the unknown uh, paramagnetic phase phases. Uh, uh, structure chromium molybdenum still after milling with one person of fullerene and carbon nanotube addition. Uh, X-ray diffraction data obtaining for the steel's powder modified with one person of addition uh, show uh, the formation of only a weak halo near the line of 110 reflection of alpha phase. Uh, we observed the same uh, halo at the initial stage of milling of the steel with 5% of addition. And the TEM data shows uh, diffraction uh, reflection of carbides are not detected. Powder particles is about 1 micrometer, and the powder particle uh, contains small equi-exit crystallites of alpha phase with size about 10 to 20 nanometers. Uh, Mosbauer spectra taken uh, for the steel samples milled for <coughs> four and a half hour with one person of addition exhibit a paramagnetic doublet here and here uh, formed 
along with the sextet corresponding of the alpha phase. The analogous doublet uh, was formed from the samples milled with 5% of tolerance and carbon nanotube additions. However, intensity of this doublet observed in the spectrum taken for the samples with 1% fullerene and carbon nanotube additions is substantially lower. Uh, thus, we can conclude that the structure changes with a Q in the samples with 1% and 5% addition of fuller and carbon tubes during high energy milling uh, is similar. However, in the case of 1% addition, uh, these changes can be interpreted as the initial stage of interaction between steels component and carbon containing condition. Besides, uh, same data show that powder particles size about 1 to 5 micrometers. Uh, we carried out uh, some experiment with pure iron. According to X-ray data, uh, the milling of carbonyl iron powder with 1% of fullerene and carbon nanotube addition for 2 5 hour does not lead to the formation of any new phases. And uh, mass power data show that hyperfine uh, parameters of almost in uh, all lines is same from pure iron. Uh, this fact indicates that in the case of milling iron with fullerene of carbon tubes, no chemical reaction between the components take place. Uh, in the next step, uh, the samples with and without carbon addition were compacted. According to X-ray data, diffraction data, samples uh, free uh, additions contain the alpha phase and traces of carbides, special carbides, metal C. In the case of uh, samples with addition, carbon nanotubes and fullerens, uh, samples contain alpha phase and uh, metal uh, and uh, carbides two types, two types of carbides, gamma phase and uh, detailed analysis of profile of 2OO peak of alpha phase uh, observed for the samples modified with fullerene carbon nanotubes, carbon nanotubes exhibit uh, the asymmetry. Uh, which manifests itself in the more substantial bordering of the reflection in the low angle range. This can be explained uh, by the formation of martensite. Uh, scanning electron microscope studies show in this slide, <coughs> and uh, uh, there are different morphology of structure components. In the compact sames prepared with different modifiers, fullerens and carbon nanotubes. You can see this in the presented images. In uh, contrast to carbides found in samples modified with fullerens, uh, carbides present in samples modified with carbon nanotubes are characterized by uh, pronounced elongate shape. Uh, with size, with this size, uh, and uh, smaller carbides in the grains, you can see. Uh, the ex uh, the existence of large macrostructure typical of the Martin site was confirmed uh, by atomic four microscope studies. The image you can see on the slide. The micro hardness of samples after hot pressing and uh, high and close to that of hardness steel. Uh, this fact along with X-ray diffraction data and atomic force microscopy data <coughs> confirm uh, on again the presence of martensite in the samples. The high hardness of steel samples modified with carbon nanotubes and fullerens is likely to be 
due to the higher carbon content in martensite in presence of uh, carbides. To increase the density of samples, the additional hot rolling and at 900 degree was performed. Uh, the result of XRD data uh, shows uh, that uh, the hot rolling changes the phase composition and macrostructure of samples. X-ray diffraction data of samples show that both before and after hot rolling, the samples free from carbon-containing modifiers consist of alpha phase and small amount of uh, special carbide. The hot rolled samples modified with fullerene and carbon on tube demonstrate the <coughs> disappearance of uh, carbide metal 763 or uh, C3 uh, carbide and formation of special carbide metal C. Precipitated and formation of more equi-exit carbide <laughs> inclusions. Uh, in the case, in this case, uh, large carbide inclusions are presented and grain boundaries. It's two case. Uh, and uh, Merkley smallet uh, and uh, smaller carbides uh, are presented in the grains. It's case one. Uh, and uh, the size of alpha phase grain was 5 to T micrometers, 10 micrometers. Uh, to determine the final annealing temperature, we conducted the following experiment and found the uh, dependent, dependence of the steel micro hardness on temperature. Um, it was found the micro hardness on temperature samples decreases continuously with the increased temp temperature. Uh, in the case of samples uh, prepared in the absence of modifiers, the main decreases in the micro hardness take place at temperature of uh, 500 to 700 degree. The macro hardness of samples modified with the full end and carbon nanotubes is higher at all temperatures. Uh, and uh, under study is that uh, for samples free from modifying addition, but it begins the market decreases analytic temperature of above 300 degree. However, at temperature below uh, 400 degree, their hardness remains equi equal to 1,000 MPa. The decrease the hardness is likely to be related to the decomposition of martensite. Uh, since the main decreases decrease in the hardness of modified steel samples start at an annealing temperature above 400 degree. And uh, this temperature was the temperature was taken as an annealing temperature. And uh, the samples annealing, annealing on this temperature uh, was uh, studied by scanning electron microscopy and the micro and the images you can see on the slide. Uh, this is image with tolerance addition. It's carbon nanotube addition. Uh, the uh, samples uh, contain alpha phase, but in case of uh, full in samples with fuller rendition, uh, metal 23C6 carbide precipitate is with size uh, half to 2 micrometers uh, located and grain boundaries of alpha phase. In the case of samples with multi-well carbon tube addition, these carbides precipitate with size 1 to 2 micrometers uh, located in uh, great boundaries of alpha phase 
and uh, carbides with size 100 to 300 nanometers are absorbed within grains. In addition, okay. in addition, TEM data sample uh, samples with carbon nanotube additions, uh, you can see structure like bainite and uh, smaller carbides. And uh, uh, I think at last uh, slide, it's mechanical properties of these uh, materials. Uh, you can see that it's a typical um, uh, curve deformation of this sample. Uh, we was uh, two type of uh, measure, tensile stress and bo uh, bending test. Uh, figure of the left uh, shows a typical deformation diagram for sample fluence. <laughs> <laughs> the comparison data Yeah, that microphone. The comparison of the data obtained by tension and bending test uh, allows us to conclude that they correlate with each other. Difference in the mechanical properties can be explained by different structures, state of the samples. And general conclusion, you can see on this slide, it's my presentation is completed. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Igor. Fantastic presentation. Something completely different to everything else we've had today. Um, certainly this afternoon we've had five completely different presentations. And um, finally, I just do like to invite any questions for Igor from his work. Yeah. So it's interesting work to put carbon in a tube and do a powder metallurgy. What you're really doing is carbon going into the austenite. Is that correct? Uh, the part of carbon uh, obtained the solid solution in uh, austenite, it's true. That's great. So why do we need to go through so much pain to get the carbon into the austenite? No, but, but I'm curious about it. I was wondering whether it is because of the stability of fullerene and multiple nanotube that is scientifically is very interesting because stability is very important. But I don't understand why do we need to go through this route to increase the hardness? Any idea on that? <laughs> Follow up. What would have happened if you used uh, graphite? Uh, I think it's uh, the next work because uh, in this work we want uh, show how to uh, carbon nanotubes and fullerenes uh, interaction with steels. You can see that interaction is different if you use carbon nanotubes or fullerenes. Results is different in mechanical source, uh, me mechanical properties is different. I think if you will use graphite or amorphous carbon, uh, its uh, result will be another. Okay, uh, we've got a couple here, Steve, if you want to bring the microphone. Thank you for the nice talk. Uh, in the previous slide you showed the tensile test curves and you have a kind of a strange difference in your elastic part of the curve. Your young models. Do you have explanation about that? With and without modification. It's Curve one and two one and three. And completely uh, different elastic parts. And green and uh, uh, blue. Yeah, exactly. Uh, these uh, materials had a different model. So it's something in the interatomic connection is changing there, yes? Yes. It's f f face uh, consists is different. Is model is different. Okay. 
Uh, my question is, what is the amount of boron in your alloy? I think for these alloys, and also when you talk about uh, carbides like uh, M23C6, the boron amount can okay. be influential. Okay. Uh, as I told, the, this is uh, industrial steels and uh, chemical uh, composition of steel, it's uh, industrial. Boron on this steel, use it for Yeah, you showed so, it so, less uh, than 0 0.005. I mean, for me, so even for an amount of less than that, it can have a dramatic effect, especially on the coarsening of the, this kind of carbides. I mean, yeah, I mean, if that means no borrow, then that's no borrow. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think we might just have time for one more question if anyone has anything to ask. Yeah, see one behind you there. And maybe we'll come to you quickly at the end, Martin. Uh, just a quick uh, comment, uh, no questions. The purpose of his study may be to make a steel nanocomposite nano with the introduction of carbon nanotubes uh, because I am working similar on some other materials, not steel. But the problem is he has chosen steel in which carbon has high diffusivity. And he finally ended up with a pictures. I didn't see any of the pictures of TEM with the individual carbon nanotubes after your heart pressing or, um, or rolling or anything. Because most of the carbon you added in the form of carbon nanotubes reacted and formed carbides. But if you take elements like aluminum or magnesium where you can add carbon nanotubes, and that is tremendously increasing the properties of the material. And that is where the uh, carbon nanotube composites is coming into the picture. But in your case, since it is steel, most of the carbon is not retained as single individual carbon nanotube, but mostly converted into your carbides. Uh, in this work, uh, we used the uh, industrial steels and chemical composition, its presence uh, in the goal of this work, it's uh, to study uh, from uh, structure from relation uh, with high energy milling, this steel and carbon additives. Okay, and um, very quickly, Martin, if that's okay. Yeah, sorry, just to. I just wanted to go back to the tensile curves because um, clearly if you look at the composition of this steel, you'd expect to get pretty good elongation out of it. So I wonder if you could comment, is it the root itself that's giving you the, the poor properties rather than the actual addition of the carbo nanotubes and the fullerene? In pure iron? The, the actual manufacturing root itself. Because the composition is good. I mean, the composition itself, you'd expect good properties, including good ductility. Uh, the mechanical properties is, uh, are presented yeah, here. If you, yeah, if you go back to the tensile curve. Your summary there, brain down. Plasticity, plasticity is yeah. the case of... Uh, but you've got elongation there, which I presume is your failure elongation. Yeah. You've got it down as 24 to 2.7% for the base steel, which is quite low. So it may put the, the results for the two additive steels into perspective. If you, if you sort of... You know, that 2.4, 2.7 should be closer to, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 percent, something like that at least, from, the a, from a normal conventional route. It's only got, it's only got 0.1 to 0.2 percent carbon. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, yeah, no, if you look at the, I'm talking about the base composition. Okay, maybe, maybe this is something that we could, maybe something we should be talking about afterwards if we're going to be discussing it uh, in depth.
because uh, I'm afraid we are actually out of time. We've overrun by about three minutes, which I don't think is bad for a whole day of talks. So um, we'd just like to say thank you to Igor for a fantastic talk. Thank you very much. <laughs>